Good morning, friends and saunterers. We are back in the saunter seat today, and we are starting on the book of Proverbs, which will be a great adventure. So <laughs> I hope you can join me. And if you miss it because of the school run or anything else that, that is pressing, good morning, Kev. Good to see you. Morning, Fra uh, Frankie. <laughs> For you. Good morning, Hayes, Mike, uh, Julie. Great to see you guys. If you miss these saunters because you're having to do the school run, you can pick them up by just going onto my page, my Facebook page, or they will appear in um, on our Prayer House YouTube channel in due course. Good morning, Mary, Hayes, Jazzy, Caroline, Anna. Woohoo! Back in the saddle. Good morning, Rach. And uh, so for those who are waiting for their fridge magnets, they will come. They just haven't arrived yet from the manufacturer of fridge magnets. So here we go. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that as we start the day with you, it is a wise start. It's a good choice. And Lord, we trust that you're going to speak to us. And so we open our hearts to you now in Jesus name. Amen. Good morning, Fran. <laughs> Kathy, yeah, ready to prance. Good morning, Liberty. Um, uh, I couldn't think of a good um, alliteration to go with Proverbs, so in the end went with prancing, which kind of somewhere near it, but morning, Anna. It, it, uh, <laughs> we'll see how we get on. So now, the book of Proverbs is an incredible book, and many have said it's one of their favourites. Good morning, Fliss. Good morning, Farah. Um, it is a book of wisdom and there were at the time of the book of Proverbs, um, so I'm led to believe, many other books of wisdom in other cultures and so this is not um, entirely unique but what, it, what makes it unique is that it's compiled by Solomon um, and there are a few other contributors but also it's very much in the vein of, um, good morning Jill, uh, in the vein of um, the sort of understanding that Yahweh is God, that this is the God we're referring to. So wisdom isn't just a kind of out there abstract concept, but it is an actual um, attribute of God and it's a gift of God and so on and so on and so on. And so we're going to discover as we go. So to start with, he, but one of the things it's probably good to say at the beginning is that the that the proverbs are not like a set of rules that you can say, oh well, it says this, therefore that must happen. There are, um, we'll see as we go through. There are exceptions to some of these statements, and that makes them more challenging because we want them to be like absolutely hard and fast principles. They are principles. They're phenomenal principles, they're universal principles, but there are also some exceptions which the Psalms, which we've just spent a lot of time going through, helps to illustrate some of these exceptions when we find ourselves in situations that seems to be against what we might expect would be the desired outcome. So, uh, so let's crack on. He says, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel to know wisdom and instruction. To, so this is his, pre, his uh, preface, if you like, and he's setting the scene. He's saying what the book is all about, what it's for, what you can expect from it. He says it is to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth, let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so here in this little preface, we have, good morning, Alison, Adrian, Rachel, great to see you guys. We have, and Anna too. Hi, Anna and Sarah, Tracy Ann. Um, we, we have the principles. He says this book is to help 
to give wisdom and instruction and to understand words of insight. So when you hear words of insight, this book will be like a key that helps you to understand them and kind of get to grips with them. It, it is to help you in your dealings with people, in wise dealings. So if you're a business person or you're a teacher or a, a healthcare professional or I don't know whatever else walk of life you may have, a pastor, a, a, I don't know, a parent. These, this book is to give you instruction in wise dealing, in the way you deal with people. Good morning, John and Joan. And it also, verse 5, there's a promise. He says, let the wise hear and increase in lear your learning. So even if you're wise already, you can increase your wisdom by reading this book. It's to, to help the simple. It's to deal with justice and fairness in your judgments and so on, in which Solomon was famous for, wasn't he? It's to give knowledge and discretion to the youth. So a young person growing up, if you're a young person or you have young people in your house, the book of Proverbs is a really good book for them to start to get to grips with even though it may appear slightly daunting but if you break it down and proceed kind of wisely or slowly perhaps even and thoughtfully it's a hugely beneficial book um billy graham said that he read it um the book of proverbs once a year and it would take him a month because there's 31 chapters in it um and so People like that have found the book of Proverbs to be a huge benefit to their lives in ministry. Morning, Sally and Karen. Great to have you guys. And so he says it's it's something by which we can um, be understanding people can get guidance from re through reading it. And it's it's helps to understand other Proverbs and sayings. It helps us to understand wise people when they're talking and to unravel their riddles, if you like. And and then verse 7, he comes to the sort of linchpin, if you like, of the whole book. He says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so he's in basically the premise on which this book is written, the whole foundation, the whole kind of underpinning concept is that the fear of the Lord is where it all begins and we have uh, perhaps a slightly I don't know we perhaps feel like the fear of the Lord is a negative thing and we shouldn't have it but actually this this fear that is being spoken of is that right reverence that respect for God that awe of him that puts him in his right place in our lives and so it, that he is, if you like, the center of our universe, the the um, the one our lives orbit around, and he's the focal point. And so, if if we're out of kilter with him, all our lives will be out of kilter. So, this fear of the Lord is that right respect, that right awe, that right reverence and honor of him, that places him in the preeminent place in our lives, and and the. The writer sets, it up, sets us up and he says, this is going to be the basis of everything. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. It beginning of all knowledge is where it all originates from. And, you know, if you want to, if you want to get started, get this thing right. If you want to be wise, get this thing right in your life. Number one priority. Good morning, Sky. Good morning, Carol. And morning, Pat and Mike. And so he says, fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so we have this, <laughs> this idea right here. He says, this isn't going to be a good book if you're a fool. You're not going to like it. It's going to upset you because you will, or you will automatically despise wisdom and instruction. And here's an interesting thing, because there are many intelligent and very very smart people who are smart in the context of this world and the and worldly wisdom and so on and yet they've got this one issue wrong in their lives and they despise true wisdom wisdom that comes from above because their heart is not set and established in the fear of the lord and in right regard for him good morning francis and so 
that, so that's our little prelude and we, we obviously could say a lot more but we don't have lots and lots of time so we'll press on he says verse 8 hear my son your father's instruction and forget Forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck or a necklace for your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without reason. Like Sheol, let us swallow them alive and whole like those who go down into the pit. We shall find all precious goods. We shall fill our houses with plunder. Throw in your lot among us and we will have one purse my son do not walk in the way with them hold back your foot from their paths for their feet run into evil they make haste to shed blood for vain is a net spread in the sight of any bird but these men lie in wait for their own blood they set for their own blood they set an ambush for their own lives such are the ways of everyone who is greedy for unjust gain it takes away the life of the of its possessors right pause take a breath verse 8 and 9 he sets us up he says listen guys you've already received instruction in wisdom don't forget this most basic building block of wisdom in your life and that's what came from your father and your mother he says here my son your father's instruction now solomon's addressing a son solomon it turns out was not such a great dad and the son he that we know that he he brought into the world was rehoboam he succeeded him as king he was a total disaster he was godless arrogant conceited made lots and lots of very bad choices and led israel into a whole period season of you know kind of era of decline and took them away from God and so he said here my son your father's instruction so for me I had godly parents who instructed me who taught me I had a mum who taught me do not forsake your mother's teaching that word there is Torah it's the same word as we have for the Old Testament law do not it but it means instruction here my son your father's instruction for Forsake not your mother's teaching, your mother's law, your mother's instruction in the truth. For they are a graceful garland for your neck and for your head and pendants for your neck. They make you beautiful. If you follow wisely in your parents' coaching and training and so on, you will be beautiful. It will make you beautiful. Good morning, David. Morning, Raymond. Morning, Louis. Now, the exception here, of course, is if you've got a godless parent or who's who's trying to lead you into bad stuff and then of course you have to make that decision quite early on actually this is not a good way to live i cannot live in the instruction of my parents but this is presupposing that your parents are giving you good advice and good instruction and it is very very wise to let them shape us and to listen to them okay so Lesson number one of wisdom is listen to your parents. So if any of my children are watching, hi Jazz, <laughs> listen to your parents because we're, <laughs> we're God's instructors for you for a season of your life. But then he's saying, listen, God, listen, son, if sinners entice you, don't do it. Don't you don't have to go with them. You can say no. If, you, if they're planning to ambush someone and rob their house, just say no. I won't be doing that. I won't be hanging out with you. And it goes right back to Psalm 1 where he said, don't don't stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. You know, it's like separate yourself from that kind of um, companionship. He says, if sinners entice you, do not consent. And you may find yourself at work where um, there is a decision being made and you think, do you know what? That is ungodly. I cannot go down that road. I cannot walk into that i cannot be part of that decision and you say you have to say to your boss look i'm really sorry i can't do that i'm i'm a christian it's against my conscience to do that i i'm sorry i think this is wrong and you may have to lose your job or whatever suffer whatever consequences of that but in the end it's far better to make that godly choice at the beginning separate yourself off from that bunch of friends that are taking you down a bad route and he says in 
18 and 19, really what they're doing is they're setting an ambush for themselves. They think they're going to get rich. They think they've found the, the secret. Just break off with them because in the end, they're, they're basically setting a trap for themselves and they're going to destroy themselves. Right. Verse 20. Wisdom cries aloud in the streets. In the market, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. So here we have wisdom kind of personified, made into, made as if she's an actual woman. Whereas really wisdom is a quality. But in this instance, he's saying, imagine wisdom is a woman and she's crying out to people in the bustle of life, in the noisy busyness of business and all the rest of it and social life. There is wisdom crying out. And this is what she says, verse 22. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you because I have called and you refuse to listen, have stretched out my hand and no one is heeded because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I'll mock when terror strikes you, when terror strikes like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel, and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way, and have the fill from their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure, and will be at ease without dread of disaster. And so here we have this invitation from this personification of wisdom she's crying out she's saying come on guys talk to me listen to me get advice from wisdom don't just plunge headlong into your own vanity into your own arrogant ideas listen to me she's crying out she's given this invitation and God has given us an invitation in James chapter 1 he says if any one of you lacks wisdom he should ask God because he gives generously without finding fault. Find that scripture. Get it on your fridge magnet. It's such an important scripture. If any of you lack wisdom, listen to me. I lack wisdom every day. I'm crying out to God for wisdom every day for my family life, leading a church and all my personal life and everything. Because I know that I need help. And of course, to ask for wisdom, we have to adopt a stance of humility, don't we? We have to come humbly and, and admit to God we don't have it. But he's saying, right, fear the Lord, beginning, is where it all starts, right? Now come to him and ask for wisdom. And right at the beginning of Solomon's reign as the king, succeeding David, who was a roaring success, Solomon um, had a vision of God and God appeared to him and said Solomon what would you like I'm going to answer your prayer just ask me for something at the beginning of your reign good morning Ruth and Louis and Raymond <coughs> so he says at the beginning of your reign what would you like what would you like to characterize your reign and Solomon said oh boy Lord I'm just a child give me wisdom please because I don't know how to lead these people and God says, that's fantastic. You could have asked me for victory over your enemy. You could have asked me for wealth, but you've asked me for wisdom. Do you know what, Solomon? Because you've asked the right, you've hit the jackpot. You've hit the kind of thing that's important to me. I'm going to give you victory over your enemies and I'm going to make you wealthy as well. And Solomon became fabulously wealthy. It actually caused him problems in the end. And although Solomon was incredibly wise, he made some huge mistakes. One of them being he didn't take his own advice. <laughs> so preachers, listen, take your own advice. Preach to yourself a few times. And Paul, preach to yourself. Um, so, um, so here's wisdom crying out, offering this invitation. Come, don't be simple anymore. Don't just scoff and be 
mocking and stupid. And there's so much stupid mocking going on out there at the moment. It drives me nuts. And he's and he says, but listen, if you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. So if you listen to my kind of telling off, if you like, my rebuke, like, don't just be foolish, come to me. I'll pour out my spirit on you. Now, this is um, the same word that we have for the spirit of God is ruach. It's the same word here, but there's a sense in which it's the spirit of wisdom. But we know in Isaiah that God talks about the spirit of wisdom being part of this um, outpouring of his spirit, that there is a that it is a spirit of wisdom. So the Holy Spirit, he is a spirit of wisdom. And so when we respond to God's rebuke in our lives, he loves to return that by pouring out his spirit of wisdom that can flood through our whole being. Anyway, just to cut a very long story short about that bit, he basically is saying, these guys, you know, they've they've ignored me they've ignored my invitation to come and get wisdom and in the end that will be a thing that mocks them it's not that god's mocking us when things go wrong but it's like uh, the invitation was there all the way to come and get wisdom and then if we stubbornly refuse and arrogantly go our own way when it all backfires on us and goes wrong and we're living with the consequence of really cruddy bad choices that we've made Wisdom is there kind of like, well, I did offer you, but now it's too late. And it is too late to seek wisdom when the calamity is falling down on us, isn't it? And we need to seek wisdom while we're young, while we're young enough for it to make a difference to our lives. We need to start making good choices when we're children. And part of the challenge of parenting is to help our children, our little ones, learn wisdom at, our, at their mother's knee, at just on their father's lap, just to learn wisdom and to make good choices because there comes a time when all, a, all the kind of pile up of silly, arrogant, bad choices we've made topples in on us and it's too late to ask for wisdom then. So let's seek wisdom. So I'm not going to read it all through again because it's too long. But let's just sum it up in three jumps, shall we? So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. But fools won't want it. They'll, they'll continue to arrogantly go their own way. Good morning, Sam. And that's heartbreaking. He's saying if your peers or your boss or your friends that you socialize with are, are up to no good peel off from them make a choice don't go down the same road as they're going say no i'm sorry i won't be with you on this one and because actually what they're doing is they're setting themselves up for for a disaster later on down the road and thirdly let's respond to the invitation of god to come and get wisdom so we know now from james that we go to god to get wisdom we don't have to this is a good book to get wisdom from but this is god's wisdom anyway and so we need to go to god and say god give me that spirit of wisdom let it begin to change my life i've made lots of foolish choices i've made bad decisions left to my own devices i'm not a great influence on myself come on lord give me wisdom and then we'll enjoy the fruit of it Whew. but whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster so there's the promise of wisdom it gives us peace it gives us security and stability in our lives how about that so there we are. That was our first prance through the Proverbs. <laughs> so we'll see you tomorrow. But let me pray. Lord, we thank you that you have invited us to have wisdom that is not our own. It's above us. It's beyond us. It's your wisdom. And so, Lord, we ask now, we humble our hearts before you. And we say, God, at the beginning of this day, as, our, as we are on the... Uh, standing on the threshold of the autumn term and children going back to school and our lives changing yet again, Lord, we pray for wisdom. We pray for wisdom in our parenting, in our business, in our leadership, in our sphere of influence, in our marriages, in our homes, in every way. Oh Lord, give 
us a spirit of wisdom in Jesus name. Amen. You guys have a fabulous day. It's been fun and I hope we're going to I'm sure we're going to have a great time as we go through the book of Proverbs. Do feel free to share it and whatever way you like and we'll talk see you tomorrow.